what do all these photos have in common? If you're thinking they're all examples of weird animal genitalia, you'd be totally right. So how do we get here? Well, we need to start with Darwin's theory of natural selection. And when you guys hear that, the first thing that probably comes to mind is, oh, that's the survival of the fittest. And in reality, when we say fitness, we don't mean competitive ability or strength. What we mean is your ability to reproduce and leave offspring behind. And so it's actually reproduction and the genitalia that's kind of an integral part of reproduction that matters. And so selection can act on genitalia just like it can on everything else. Now, in terms of maximizing your fitness, the best strategies for males and females are actually different. And so from the perspective of the female, the best strategy is generally to be choosy and only mate with those males that are the highest quality. And this is because females usually invest more in, offspring, uh, in their offspring than males. Males, on the other hand, have the opposite approach. The best strategy from the male perspective is actually to reproduce with as many females as possible. And we're talking generally here about animals. So the fact that these strategies are polar opposites sets up a sexual conflict. And it's that sexual conflict that actually drives the evolution of a lot of these weird genitalia. So for example, if we focus in on damselflies, damselflies are very promiscuous. So males and females mate with multiple individuals. And as a result, the males have evolved a penis that looks like a spoon covered in spines. And they'll actually use that to scrub out the female's vagina to remove any other male sperm before they deposit their own. Now, cabbageoid butterflies have a slightly different approach. In this case, the males have actually encased their sperm in this really hard outer coating that's difficult for the female to break through. So she has to waste a lot of time trying to get to the sperm. And as a result, the females have evolved a vagina that's covered in teeth. And so they literally chew through this coating to get to the sperm, they use it, and then they move on to the next male. Other females have developed these dead-end cavities in their vaginas that can actually trap the sperm of unwanted males. You can see them here kind of stained in blue. And not to be outdone, males of other species have developed penises that are covered in really sharp spines, and even in one case, a hypodermic needle that they use to puncture the female's reproductive tract and increase the likelihood that their sperm gets to the egg. Now, probably the craziest example <laughs> comes from ducks. And so most birds actually don't have penises, but ducks are a very important exception to this rule. And the duck mating system involves a lot of sexual coercion. And so this basically means that the males are trying to force themselves onto females. So in mallard ducks, about 35% of the mating attempts are forced copulations. So as a result, females have evolved a vagina that's spiraled like a corkscrew, and so you can see the spirals right there. Males have also evolved a spiral penis, but they actually spiral in opposite directions, and so it's really hard to get them to work properly. And the male's penis, when it becomes erect, it's a little bit different from humans. It's actually explosive. That's the only word to describe it. So this is slowed down 10 times, and here it comes, and there's the spiral. See, I wasn't lying. That's what it looks like. And so the fact that it's actually really difficult for these genitalia to work together is what helps maintain the female's choice over mates. So it really takes the male and the female working together to get these genitalia to work properly and produce offspring. And obviously, this has been working for many millions of years. Now you might be thinking, well, what about humans? So human genitalia and kind of primate genitalia on the whole are somewhat unremarkable compared to these other genitalia that I've talked about today. And a lot of that relates to mating system, right? So in humans, our mating system is largely monogamous. And when we see more monogamous mating systems, we usually see more simple genitalia. At the end of the day, as long as humans exist, we're going to continue to evolve alongside all other animals on Earth. And that includes our genitalia. Thank you.